Uh, 450 Race Recap, brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Gutters, always well hung, just like Justin Barsha. If you're in the southwest Michigan area and you need any sort of gutters or outdoor uh, 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 exterior remodeling stuff done, make sure to check them out. Josh and Kayla, great moto people. Link in the description down below. All right. <clears throat> well, we're now 12-0. and 0. Mm-hmm. Uh, he definitely looked beat after those motos. It's humid, as which, it always is at the wick. Which was different than what we've seen with him. Um, which kind of gives a little bit more, uh, I think, kind of shows that he was trying a little bit harder yesterday. So I will say, I think the the perfect season thing, He, I don't know that he really cares about it. Um, I, was lis- I was listening to an interview with uh, Dan Truman on the Moto 60 show last week on Steve's Moto 60 show. And Dan's really close with the Lawrence brothers. Like he kind of, I think he manages that compound they have or something. Um, but anyway, uh, and he said, he was like, he was like, so Jack came to me this week and he goes, dude, if Tomac was here, do you think I'd beat him? (laughs) Because this is like a thing now. Like it is crazy how much they're talking about the broadcast, bring it up to, but what the hell, what the hell else are you going to talk about? Stu and Ricky, obviously the only ones that are like qualified to talk about this, but it Mm -hmm. is just wild. Like, how much of a debate this is about Jet. And you're right. Like, it's kind of hard to talk about other people. Like, you can, you know, but, like, it's crazy to hear, like, Stu and, and Ricky break down, like, their opinions yeah. of Jet. Because this is, like, uncharted territory for for those two mm-hmm. to ever kind of talk about this stuff. Yeah. And it is wild to hear, like, the way, how polar opposite both of them are mm-hmm. when it comes to what they do or don't think Jet is doing. Yeah. Where, like, Ricky is kind of, and I don't know if this is just Ricky trying to appeal to the masses, he's kind of going with, like, what the normal thought of what Jet is doing as opposed to Stu is kind of, like, what I believe and what some of the other people believe. Like, yeah, he's trying. Could he get beat? Yes. Would he still have the championship? Probably. But he's not unbeatable. Chase is going to beat him. Eli would beat him. It's just it's crazy to hear the back and forth banter on the, on the broadcast when those two start talking about this because this is something in my lifetime because I I've I've seen I was there I witnessed it in person on TV I was part of all of that to hear those two talk about something that really up until this point was never ever talked about Here's the thing you want to talk about the guys who are most qualified to talk about A if he can do this and B where it stacks up mm. those two are it yeah, they're the only ones. They're the only ones. Like everybody else to talk all, about this. All of stuff. us, even if you were to get somebody as accomplished of, as Eli Tomac, like yeah, he can't. He's not really qualified to talk about. Nope. It. Like e- Hurlings, Geyser, Kevin. Like you can go through all the greats: McGrath, Ricky, jo- like everybody. Nobody is qualified to talk about this outside no. of those two. And it is just, it's for me as a person who was part of that era. I mean, obviously, I was part of the '90s era to begin with, but that mm-hmm. era, I love it because it's just. It's something that has, up until this year, never really been discussed. It's almost like it was a taboo thing to talk about because it's like, well, Ricky and James are the only ones that are allowed to talk about this shit. Well, now it's like they're in the booth and they're talking about it. And I kind of feel like it's blowing people's minds because it's just something that up until this point, they've never... They've been asked questions about it, but they've never really expanded on the whole perfect season. Yeah, and now, now they're having to expand on it, which is super interesting. I will say... So the show last week, you or maybe it wasn't last week, but you've said, you know, oh, it's not as impressive. They're not racing as many people. There was a guy in the comments. I don't know if you saw it. Broke down the entire thing. Like, you know what? This is actually, even though, uh, even though, like, it doesn't look as good or whatever, you know, because there isn't that other guy that's really pushing him. Yeah. He broke down the dude's during Ricky and Stu's era, like perfect seasons, like who had won titles and stuff like that, who were in the class with them versus the jet train. Yeah. And they're like, and they're, and they only did healthy people too. It wasn't like they were running like Barsha and Anderson and all this crap like that. And they're like, dude, this, this is the list for jet. And it's like, and then it's like Stu and Ricky, like there's no comparison as far as like how many accomplished dudes, which I know, I know it's still different, but I was just like, well, that's, an interesting point to bring up but you also have to remember the guys that they were racing though yeah they also race them in other classes and that's why those guys don't have as many championships yeah well and, and like because like, kevin window i, Wyndham, I, I know what you're saying yeah. but i'm just saying like 
Oh, there's the no line denying skinny. It, yeah. Like when you when you lay it out on paper, it's like, dude, Jets got all these title guys who have have all these titles because that's what he was basically listing. Was like, I think I'm not sure if he did wins, but I know he did titles for different guys who were in the class. You know, like I said, with Jet now and then with those two guys when they did their perfect season, and it wasn't even close. There were so many more now. But I mean, you can also look at you can say the same thing about like when Eli Tomac was winning and stuff. Yeah, I mean, because if you look at if you like started comparing and it's kind of like apples to oranges, different era, whatever. But like you start comparing to go down the list, okay. So you look at a guy like Dylan Ferrandis, who obviously mm-hmm. everybody know Dylan's one of my guys, and then you compare somebody like okay, who would be the third guy? Chad Reed is 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 Dylan on Chad Reed's level as far as accomplishments? No, no. Well, is is, is Aaron yeah, Plessinger he's... on Kevin Windham? Is what Kevin Windham did his yeah. accomplishments? Like I get it, and I totally don't. I don't disagree with that. But it's just comparing what somebody has done as far as like titles. You have to also look at who those guys were racing at the time, too. It's just something you never sure. compare because it's different eras. It's yeah. like comparing the 80s to the 90s and the mm-hmm. 90s to the 2000s because me, and I've said this plenty of times, I still say you take Ricky and Stu at the level that they were at and you put them on modern bikes, they would beat all these guys and it wouldn't even be a question. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's just I get it, and, and, it, and it's, it's, it is very impressive. You look at what those guys accomplished. But I think it's just always going to be hard because it's look, totally different eras. Look, it was it was interesting to see it written out, but I wasn't coming in hot with it to fist like fight he, you over it. Like so example, like, like if, if Eli was out there, <laughs> yeah, do you think Jet would be undefeated right now? No. Because I'm sorry, no. Eli would have beat Jet both motos yesterday in yeah, Southwick. Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Not to say that Jet still wouldn't win the championship. Yep. Not taking that away at yep. all. I'm 100 percent with the he, Stu he, train he, of thought. He like, wouldn't be undefeated right now. No. And I know once again that's a hypothetical, and you don't. And, know. and going back to what I said. Dan, yeah. Dan told him the same thing. He's like, dude, no way. He's like, Eli would have beat you at some point. Yeah. Here. Like, at some point, Eli would have been beast mode, and Jet yeah. would have been like, I don't, I don't want to do that. He's I, like, he's like, don't get me wrong. He's like, you're really fucking good too. Yeah, of course. But like, yeah. Eli's Eli Tomac. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, whatever. So, so yeah, it's it, it's just it's crazy that we're a point that we're talking about this, and it's cr- it's crazy to hear Ricky and Stu talk about it mm-hmm. because, like I said, up until this point, like this has never really been discussed. But it is weird to me that they're on two different ends of the spectrum. Like, Ricky, once again, is with the the most what people believe, whereas Stu is kind of, like, he doesn't really think that Jet, a lot of times, isn't pushing harder than we think. Like, Ricky just believes, oh, Jet can just wick it up at any time. Yeah. Whereas, like, Stu is kind of like the stuff that I've been saying, which... Stu is very hard on the, like, he's pushing it, and it's like, man... There's sometimes that I, I see that, but I'm like, man, dude, there's a lot of times that, like, I'm sorry. I just don't agree with that. And and I know I have nowhere to talk compared to Stu. I also think Stu is one of the guys that's actually more qualified to talk about who's pushing and who's not <laughs> that, as opposed to well, Ricky. Well, that... Because Ricky was know. always full bore. So, Ricky was always full bore. I was going to say, so I haven't watched enough Stu... I've watched a lot of Stu stuff, but I haven't watched enough, and I wasn't around in that era. Yeah. Um, To know what he looked like, like, if he looked this slow kind of like jet did yesterday i mean dude there was no point yesterday that i looked at jet and was like man he's fucking pushing but then it you was look at always, how spent he was it's like yeah but it, it was always just like man he's just cruising but yeah, yeah you look at how spent he was and it's like holy shit like yeah he was he must have been pushing i mean like you even look at that last that fast lap that heater he's trying to put in the second moto yeah. and then when i don't know if it was march banks that got in the way with him like mm-hmm. dude he was pushing yeah so it's just once again i think it's a technique thing because like i used to say this about kevin windham everybody's always said it you look at k-dub and you're like dude he's not even trying and then you look you're like oh he's at the top of the board Mm -hmm. it's just jet he hops up over shit whereas chase just plows into shit dude it's the same thing with eli like you know when eli is going fast yeah but with jet like the fact that he just wheel taps he preloads pops up and over shit he's very light on the bike you're like dude it's hard to think he's going fast but once again i've said it before in supercross it's because he's grabbing so much traction all the time because yeah. he's not bearing it. That's why it, it just it's weird. I never noticed how much Chase bulldogs shit until yesterday, and then I went, "Wow!" Because yeah. like when you watch him compared to Jet Ride, it is night and day different. He does a lot of he does a lot of the same things that Jet does as far as how he approaches the track. Like he's standing yes, up and stuff, and yeah. he pops up and over shit. But yes, they definitely. But he pushes through a lot more shit than Jet yeah, does. Yeah, exactly. Dude. And it, and I think I think he developed some of that after racing Eli last summer. I will tell you what, though, dude. They, these guys... Uh, I'm going to say this, and you're going to disagree with me, but that's okay. I completely, like... I'm not sure who beats him this year, because you look at, like, yesterday... Number one, 
this is something that I've noticed in the practice show, and I'm not sure if you've noticed it. Jet doing stoppies all over the place. Yeah. How many of those guys do you see doing that? Just like so relaxed on race day, they're just it's like, yo, it's Kenny. They're like, yo, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do stop. Yeah, Kenny, that's Kenny exactly that it. Shit. That's the last I mean, person I've ha- seen. And that's where the whole time he figured he started doing the whole loading up on the front, riding, the, and then hitting the whole shot. Yeah, us. but that's not what that. And at first, when I first saw that a couple weeks ago, I thought, oh, that's what Jet's doing. Now I'm like, no, that's not what he's doing. He's just doing stoppies because he likes to do stoppies. Yeah, which I'm like, it's. That's how relaxed he is. Yeah. And Dan said in the in the Moto sixty show on Thursday, he's like, dude, he's like, honestly, he's like, I don't know if somebody beats him because the kid is so <laughs> just and he doesn't want to say he doesn't care, but he's like, dude, he's so just week by week, like, oh yeah, we're just going I'm just going it's to race my dirt bike. Before, it's because he's a yeah. rookie and he doesn't know any better because he's still a kid. Well, I have noticed though, outside of the second moto at high point, because he didn't get a good start, pretty yeah. much he's got starts all year long outside mm-hmm. of that moto. And it's the same, it's what happened when Chase ripped the holy and, and when Dylan, I think because he is so loose all the time, that's why he can go so hard so early. Yeah. It would be interesting to, to me, and we get here in a few weeks and we'll get to where I think Chase is going to be in these next couple rounds, what it would be like if he has to race somebody else's race at the beginning of the moto and people are like, well, high point, he got a bad start. Dude, he was only doing what he was doing because that track was blown out. Yeah. So it's like... But because he is so loose so early in the motos, that's why he can get a gap the way he does. The same thing when he got around Chase, got around Dylan. Because I'm sitting there, I'm going, dude, what the fuck are you guys doing? But then it clicked with me. I'm like, it's because Jet just is so willy-nilly with his attitude. Yeah. He doesn't think about the fact of, man, I might blow myself out if I try to push this hard at the beginning of the moto. That's why he gets those big gaps, and then he makes people ride his race. He makes Mm -hmm. them come, and then he can wick it up because he has more energy. So it's going to be interesting to see the moment when somebody gets to start and he can't get around them really early. I, but here's the thing. When the fuck are we going to see that? Because yesterday, I'll, I'll be real honest, when Sexton yanked that start, it, was it the first moto or the second first moto? moto. Dylan got when, the start when second Sexton, moto. When Sexton yanked that start first moto, I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah, like, but this I mean, is going to be a fucking battle. And then in two corners, yeah. he blew by Chase like he was standing still. And I'm like, Chase is bu- okay. Never yeah. fucking mind. Yeah, it's 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 a weird thing, and I and, I, and like I said, I really noticed yesterday because I get like I'm I got frustrated because I'm like, what the fuck are you guys do? Like I understand you don't want to blow yourself out, you don't want to make a, a mistake, especially if you're stiff at the beginning of the moto, which yeah. a lot of normal people are. Yeah, which Jet is not normal. A lot of normal people are <laughs> stiff at the beginning of the moto, like they're trying Just to get kicking it, bro. Yeah, their heart rates up super high, but they're you know whatever, but. I'm like, dude, I'm like, what are you fucking guys doing? Like, if I'm Chase and I'm on the inside of Jet, I'm like, dude, I'm running you wide in the corner. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Here. You got to do something to get this kid off of his off of his comfort zone or out of his comfort zone, however you want to word it, because I think these guys are giving this kid too much leeway. Dude, run it in. I'm, I'm not for dirty riding, but at this point, it's kind of the same shit with what Ricky and Stu did back in the I day. I honestly think Dylan would, but Dylan can't fucking hang. Well, and we'll get to that in a minute with the he, way Dylan, he with can't, his bullshit he, that he's got. He can't fucking hang right now. Well, and fucking, I know there's shit going on. Like, yeah. that's whatever. We'll get to that in a second. But, I just, but like, he can't hang. And Sexton, dude, I'll, I'm here to tell you, if we go next week into Millville, and they pull starts on him like they did this week or whatever, and he blows by them in the first two corners... Outside of Unadilla, because I just don't know how well Jet's going to ride well, Unadilla Washugal, after last Washugal. year. I don't give a shit about Washugal either. The only one I'm worried about is Unadilla. Jet at this hasn't point won Washugal yet. Jet hasn't won on. Has Jet? Did Jet win? Yeah. He's won all these other He's tracks. Won, the, the tracks that he struggles with the most is Washugal oh. and Unadilla. Well, I'm here to tell you at this point, the only one I'm really concerned about is Unadilla. And the way he's riding, I'm still like, dude, he's going to have so much confidence, it's not going to matter because it's going to take him 10% higher just in confidence alone. That it's like, because cause like I said, literally yesterday when, when Sexton got that start, I was like, oh, yes. I was like rubbing my hands because I was like, finally, we're going to get a 450 race here yeah. that's going to be like last year, battle to the end or whatever. Because Chase can ride the wick. He's he's okay. He's not it. great in the sand, though. He's not great. He's even said Well, this. that's Remember what he said, year? and then last year he fucking did whatever he did with it. I mean, so. Eli told... Eli- yeah, he but... He beat him down. I just... I don't think I expected him to get to beat Jet in the sand. And we might as well just get to Chase at this point. Um, Sexton goes 2-3 two, two, two. For, two, for, yeah, thir- two, thir- two, for third. What? 2-3 for third. You went 2-2 two, two yesterday. No, he went 2-3. Dylan went 3-2. Are you looking at Red Bud or are you looking at what, the Wick? Oh, fuck. I was Hold about on. to say. I clicked Southwick, but it... I was about to say, Chase went 2-2. It's two, hard two. to tell because yeah. Jet's always at the top with 1-1. One, one. Yeah, okay, so Sexton goes 2-2. Two, two. Sorry. Yeah, so 
I didn't at any point think that he was going to win the wick yesterday because he's even said like he is not great in the sand. It's something he's got to work on. Like it's it. I mean, he got. But we go to Millville last year. He should have split motos with Eli. The only reason he didn't win that first moto is because the burn, the rut gave out, blew out going down the hill before Mount Martin, and then the second moto, like Eli just wanted to go beast mode and jet or Chase had nothing for him. Yeah. These next three rounds, to me, are probably the rounds that I could see he's going to give Jet trouble because I think they're probably three of his favorite tracks outside of Paula. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I just yesterday, Chase, I think, he tried to up to a level that he probably was not comfortable with trying to run with Jet. And I think because he's obviously not 100% yet, he blew himself out. Whoa, because- whoa. Now, wait. Haven't you heard? No. Supposedly, that mono test he got was a false positive. I'm not even talking about the mono bullshit. I'm talking about the fact of like he just hasn't been riding. Okay. Well, I was gonna say, I've I've now yeah, he I've now heard that that mono he test mono. was a we, false we positive. We all know he didn't have that. Uh-huh. That yeah, was I, I wasn't referring to that. It was the fact of like who knows how long he's even been on the bike, how much training up until Red Bud second round or second race. Um, no, I still believe that, and I I stand by what was Stu said. If Chase never would have got hurt at Paula. It, in the first practice and then in the middle of the week in the secret test, we would have had a battle this it year. It wasn't a secret test. It was a big test. There were a bunch of teams there. Well, it wasn't secret, secret test in the sense that nobody else heard about it uh, outside yeah. of yeah, the in anyway. the know people. So not secret. You're right. There's not a lot secret. of secrets happening right now. Yeah, whatever. We'll get to we'll that get later. To that. Um, <laughs> but I, I still believe that Chase, this would be a battle for the championship. Like, There's no reason to believe, especially not hearing Jet say, yeah, I was going 95%, like, because they asked him about that. Mm-hmm. Like, where where is your level at? And he goes, yeah, 95%. Once again, we know that going 100% on a he 450. I'll tell you what. He didn't look beat down after the race yesterday. Who's that? Chase? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. He, lo- he looked fine. No, he looked fine. I think it's just one of those is, is just getting your reflexes back to what it was. And once again, being off the bike for a while. I, well, I'm here to tell you, if he, if he doesn't win a moto next week, I don't know that he beats him this year. I think I will. I would give the best chances at Washougal, Unadilla, Millville. I think it's. Uh, he was good at Millville last year, dude. That's he what was, I'm saying. He I was think, really fucking good. I think good. Millville. It's a fifty-fifty shot. I think it goes up Washougal, Unadilla, especially Unadilla because Jets just not been great there for some odd reason. Um, Let me ask you this: If we get to Washougal and he hasn't beat him, do we see Chase not ride the rest of the outdoors? No, I think he's going to ride because I think you I think, think he's, you think he's going to keep busting his confidence like this because i'll tell you what this isn't good upstairs wise for him to continue to get beat down by this kid i think he's gotta i think he's gotta keep riding because who knows what his situation is going to be going into the smx rounds because we don't really we know it's we don't know is he going to be on a honda is his ktm deal going to start then like what's the he's not riding ktm for smx his honda deals through october 1st well He's gonna. He's gonna be. Look. Hey. This clearly, is, we found out that it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> we'll, so we'll, we'll. We will get to that. But no way. He's gonna ride Honda. All right. So they're, then they're yeah, talking, he's gonna keep riding. They're talking about like if he wants to ride. What's it called? Like is Honda gonna what's give that? Designations. He's not riding those nations. No fucking way. There. <sighs> uh, actually, that was something I was gonna ask you if you wanted to bring up. We can we're talk not about. Gonna, it. We're we not gonna talk send, about it later. We're not sending a team. You don't think we're gonna send a team no. at all? No. We're not sending a team. You don't think we're gonna send a team at all? Who the fuck are we gonna send? Who are we gonna send? That's a great your two fifty guy. You have a you have choice between Hayden Deegan and RJ. Who's your four fifty guys? Cowie's not sending anybody. Cowie's not going to. Chase send is not going to go. Cooper Webb's obviously not going to go. Eli's not going to be. Who are you going to send? RJ will be on a four fifty. And I don't know who the I don't know who the next Marshall one is. Which won't is be ready really, by then. So what, that's the thing is, who's our next best American? That, that is this is something that was brought up this week, and they were like, "Look, the only reason I think Chase would go." And like try to work it where he just rode the number one. He's going to KTM where DeCoster's in charge of the mm. Dis Nations team. Okay, DeCoster is the same way as us. No matter what we say, of like he wants to save face too. So like forcing him to not go or ride it, ride his new bike is fucking dumb. Yeah. So he's gonna be like, all right, look, we'll let him ride the Honda. I think Honda and Lars like that event enough that they would send him and you Ch- think jet and hunter go and chase oh yeah you think so oh yeah because they think they're gonna win australia oh yeah 
Oh, well, oh yeah, those two are going to lead fucking Australia uh, to as close as they can fucking close get. Close as for no, as but they're many. not going to. They won't win. I, well, their I don't, third guy's I, way too. I don't. I don't know what the third guy situation is. So well, like, here, I'm here. I'm way out on that. But yeah. but back to the back to the U.S. thing, and it's because Chase will get to run the number one plate on his bike, which I think will be would be a big check mark because he still has enough of that pride in the U.S. type deal for that kind of shit that he would want to do that. And who knows if he's ever going to get that chance again in his career. So it's like, okay. And and the other thing is, is it's only a week after the SMX shit's over. So it's like, he's going to be on the Honda anyway. Then you have a week of outdoors. Then you go do this and then you can jump on the KTM. So you're not really even going to get a jump. I just personally don't believe we send a team because of the fact that there's no way we don't send a team. There's no way they don't send somebody the one, who two, loves three. MX of nations. I just don't see it, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a shit show. There's nobody they're going to fucking send. We're going to get, oh, they're going to send Deegan. We'll get smoked. No, they're going to send Deegan. Well, yeah, I mean, cause he's going to be outside of something crazy. He'll probably be the number one us 250 guy. But yeah. We're going to get smoked. They're going to send Deegan. RJ's already been panhandling, trying to fucking get on the team, which the I think he's going to be the 450. The, you're going to have the to. MX three guy. You'll have to. And then you're going to, or whatever. And yeah. Three. MX3 and then yeah. Chase is going to be your MX1 guy. That's it. That's how it's going to go. If that is the team we're going to get smoked. There's no you heard it you heard it here first. I know they've been talking about it on a lot of other shows this week, but I'm going to stamp this as you're going to have Chase go on the Honda with the number 1 plate for MX1. You're going to have RJ go with the number is it 3 plate? Yeah. For MX3 and, and you're going to have Deegan going to go with the number 2 for the well, MX2 ha- class. Well, if that's the case if Hunter and Jet and then Chase do go that hunt that Honda tent's going to be real interesting because Tim Guys is going to be there for a while. He's going to be there cuz Slovenia will for the they'll send a team this time. Yeah, cuz so you're going to have you're going to yeah. have you're and Geyser comes back this weekend for Czech Republic. Oh, does he? Cool. So you're going to have a weird dynamic there. Yeah. It's that's whatever, man. Be a weird fucking thing. I don't, I, I, look, I, don't, I don't you, really care. I'm not even going to be around it. <laughs> you know that I love that event. I have the I I yeah. just, I do. But I think us sending a team this year is a terrible idea. There's not a chance. We sent a team that was Thomas Covington, Sealy, and Zach Osborne. That, and you don't think we're no, going to send just, a team this year, especially with Deegan? Get out of here. No way. And the one, two, three plates, there's no chance we don't send a team. I think it's a we terrible will idea. Se- we will send fucking... We didn't send a team in 2021? Suck, uh, fucking E minus. Yeah, well, 2021 had a whole different set of ball game problems going on. Well... If we do send a team, it'll be great because that's part of the thing that makes that event. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we yeah will. Will. A, in Erne, in Erne in France, pff, not a chance in hell. We'll get the only the only way we don't send. And I don't think that Australia team that Australia team ain't gonna win. Either. The only way we don't send the French a, team will fucking win. Uh, either Chase or RJ, depending upon however you want to work this, would be the the oddball of Cooper Webb. But we'll get to. What could happen with that? I don't here. think Cooper Webb ever wants to go back to Renee. Well, I don't after know. We'll see. Anyways, so, anyway. So with Chase, uh, no, I tangent. I think that he. I mean, I feel like the show's gonna be a lot of that with all the shit going on. Uh, I think that he. I think he can. It's a fifty-fifty shot next weekend. Um, but I still believe had he not had his issue at Paula, I think that this would be a totally different situation because mm-hmm. there's like I've said this a million times. There's no reason not to believe after the way those two rode that second moto at Paula that Chase can't run with jet and i think even jet was a little surprised that he dropped him because you notice how much he was looking around that first moto oh yeah after chase got into lappers and like i said i think chase blew himself out maybe i think i think he blew himself out okay so explain this to me here then so dylan goes three three what what happened to your boy yesterday really yeah you should ask that he fucking hates that bike. I have never seen I know Dylan. He hates that bike, I have never but... seen Dylan this visibly pissed off about a bike setup oh, man, it's since terrible. his Bud Kawasaki days. Did you back. listen? Did you listen to his pulp? He's pulp done. Interview? He's, he's no, but he, well, yeah, he was talking about because he doesn't have a deal, and then the whole retiring thing. He's not going to retire. Truman said he's talked to some wives that are real close there. Like that's not a joke. That's a legitimate thing. He'll like, end he, up on a team. It's just I don't think it's going to be the situation he wants. I want to know who the manufacturer is that's going with the with who twisted the. Twisted T Suzuki oh, the Hep teams. Team? Yeah. I think I think he ends up on Hep with Kenny. Who what's the manufacturer Hep's going after though? They're going after a manufacturer. I think right now. I think every I They're think, trying to get off Suzuki's. I think that they've talked to KTM and I think Honda's been thrown around quite a few times. Boy, that would be interesting, the Honda thing. Do you want to know the super interesting thing I heard about uh like the Twisted T situation or whatever with that? So that's the same situation as the Bud Light thing. Yeah. Back in the day with McGrath. Yeah. Do you want to know what's real fucked up? Is like you can't have a rider that's under 25. That's why Dylan Schwartz and Marshall yeah, Dahl, they're are the not, progressive yeah. team. They're not the Twisted T team. That's super duper yeah. interesting yep. to me. Yep. So I think that he ends up at HEP. 
uh, or whatever it's going to end up being. I mean, that, that's the only place to go because everywhere else is full, man. Yeah, he's been talking to him. Uh, I know he's that, not going to stay where he's at. I'll tell you that much right now. No, he's not going to be on that team. But he is uber pissed off. And dude, like I said, I have not seen Dylan that visibly he's, upset yeah. with the bike since his Bud Racing Kawasaki is, man, days. He was good yesterday. Or, I'm sorry, last week at Red Bud. He was good. And then, like, this week, it's like he's 45 seconds off. Yeah, he, and I'm uh, just like, wow. Yeah, like I said, I think that that's he's just he's over that team. He's over that bike. I don't know what happened from last year to this year outside of the uh, not not talking about the bike, the team, the team dynamic with yeah. him. Uh, I don't know if this has a lot to do with Eli being up in the air with Cooper Webb coming over. Do you think it's a team dynamic or do you really think he just can't get that bike figured out? I think the big I, Cause I would say do, it's more the bike. I was going to say because I like everything you hear is like star will try a lot of shit. Yeah, you know what they should try? Put him on the 2022. <laughs> That's not an option. Well, that should be the fucking option, because I tell you what, he'd be 10 times better on that 2022. Maybe. Because he wouldn't be getting beaten by 45 seconds if he was on the 2022 yesterday. It's so weird, though, how he was so how he was so much better at Red Bud, and then we get yesterday. I mean, I guess I know it's a sand, sand track. It's different, but it's still, like, it's super, yeah. it's weird of, like, how good he was. We'll see if he's better this week. Hopefully he is. Of course, he did say, too, like, they did a ton of testing, and he kind of fucked that up. I still just don't understand. Tired. I still think just, dude, his, his chassis, that head thing, so squatted in the rear he can't get away with that he doesn't steer with the rear tire he's not like ryan villapoto no he rides from center to front Mm -hmm. and you can't have that back end squatted that much when you ride at the front of the bike yeah and i just don't understand it and i think that's part of it too man i think he was coming a lot of those bolt a lot of those berms especially the sweep that front end's just sitting high and he couldn't get the front end to plant especially coming out all the square edges and dude like i said i have not seen dylan that visibly pissed off about a bike setup since he was an mx2 guy on bud kawasaki and that was Ten years ago. I just like, Dylan is normally... Like, we know this about Dylan. Say what you want about him. I like the dude. I know people have issues with him, whatever. Say this thing about Dylan. He's not a guy that stirs the pot as far as team, team-wise team goes. He no. never has. If he's had an issue, it's something you don't see him talk about it. Yesterday? I don't know. He, he'll, he'll when be, has he he'll ever be, thrown Star under the bus? He'll be on it. He, well, he hasn't. That's what I mean. But because that's probably because the bike has never been this bad. And that's what I'm saying, though. He's never stirred the pot as far as his team goes. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I don't think you could have paid him to say a good thing about that bike. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's a bad situation. And there, you know so. he's probably pissed off, especially going, what the fuck, dude? Like, mm-hmm. I, I should not be getting beat by this much. And I know in his heart of hearts, he knows he can beat these dudes, and he is probably every moment. See, with him, whereas Chase, I don't think it's uh, as much of a mental thing because with Chase, it's different because Chase go- is probably going, well, I know I can beat this kid. Like, I proved I can run with him, whereas Dylan is just like, dude, it's my fucking bike. Like, Chase doesn't really have a big excuse outside the fact that he's been off. Dylan, for him, I don't think that it, he every time he gets beat by Jet or Chase, he's going, oh, man, I can't beat these guys, can't beat these guys. I think he's just, every time he rides that bike, he just gets more and more frustrated. So I don't think going into whatever happens with him next year, mentally he's going to go, fuck, dude, I'm going to get smoked by these guys. I yeah. think he can literally hang his hat on the fact his bike sucks, mm-hmm. which really makes me wonder how Eli would be doing this year on that bike. That's a good question. That's something else that I'm like, I'm like factoring into this a bit of like, so if we had Eli there developing the bike for outdoors too, yeah. because that's the other thing too, is like Dylan's the only 450 guy developing that bike. Like there isn't anybody else. So, you know, what the wild thing is hmm. granted, totally different track set up a lot more fast paced over there as opposed to here. Uh, dude, the Yamaha guys over the GPs are doing great no issues. Yeah. Super cold and off and up until Renault got hurt. No issues whatsoever. Yeah, they asked him that, and he kind of danced around it a little bit. He was like, well, yeah, they talked to the Euro guys, but like, we, we don't have any of their setup. Or I honestly also think I chalk it up to the fact that those dudes ride more than our guys, well, and I think that they yeah. just are better at setting up bikes. Yeah, that could be too. So um, so AP goes 4-4. He has a back injury. He also was – what <laughs> What was worse? Dylan getting beat by what he did or the fact of Dylan had over 40 seconds on AP and fourth? What was uh, worse? I don't know, man. It was weird yesterday. There I think was, <laughs> there was none of these dudes could fucking hang. None of them. Like, Jet had them, Jet had them all covered. I know he only beat Sexton by, like, 10, 12 seconds, yeah. but I really think that was a management thing, to be honest No, I'm with not you. even talking about that. I'm talking about and the then, fact of and the, then, yeah, Dylan and, had 40 seconds yeah, on AP and yeah, fourth. Yeah. I think that that's... He's got back injury. Yeah, Whatever. I think this is just a thing that everybody's like, hey, we'll just like trickle it out that there's an injury, and the guy just goes, okay, cool, whatever. Well, we all know it's because they took his fucking forks. Yeah. They took his suspension. They won't let him ride the stock stuff. I don't know, man. 
This definitely reiterates the conversation we had last week, though, about AP. Like, dude, I love AP to death, but yesterday it was bad. Well, and AP's not going to say anything because AP is going to AP's resigned for that team yeah. for next year, so he's not going to say shit. So, well, and I'm also looking at the schedule coming up, and outside of Bud's Creek and Iron Man, I can't find a track where I'm like, yeah, AP's going to no. do better. No, he. This is this is where where he's kind of slotting in here. We're we're now starting to see the the hierarchy. Yeah. Really good. Check up there. Uh, March Banks goes 10-5 for fifth. He is pretty good on that 450, man. If he could get off the fucking gate, it would be better. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this also kind of makes Brandon Haas and um, what's his name? Um, I'm actually wildly impressed at how much of a public talking point that actually is of how bad they were on the 250. What is it, Mike Minacci or whatever? I don't know. I, th- I think like it's that. Mike Minacci. Uh, that definitely makes them look like a butt. And I would never say this about yeah. Brandon Haas because Brandon Haas, I actually respect the hell out of him. Makes him look real fucking dumb. It, it makes that. It makes that. Because even our stupid asses are like, why is Garrett? Why is Garrett on a two fifty? Yeah, well, <laughs> the thing is, is that two is. I I don't think it's. I don't think it was him on the two fifty. I think the two fifty is not good that they have for some reason. Which is weird because that. Which might, is well, granted, it's different outdoor weird. supercross, but that yeah. might be fine in supercross. Yeah. Look so how well Enzo. So did. the outdoors is super, super, super interesting that it's that bad outdoors um but man it's it is and he's gotten himself into the smx shit now so yeah that's also something too with the points i want to talk about i don't like we can just gl- like go over it uh i have a comment about that whole thing and we've talked about it but as far as the smx goes with garrett um it really does make me wonder how he's gonna fare come smx because obviously it's not a true. They're not true super. It doesn't matter. He go out there, just roll around and get twenty five k. So fuck it, do it. No, I mean it's like I'm just curious if he comes in prepared. Uh, what his mindset's going to be? Is he going to be like, dude, never really ridden a four fifty in supercross. Uh, Granted, once again, not typical supercross. Is he going to go out there and try to actually like, hey, I I want to do well, get some top tens, mm-hmm. or is he just going to kind of go there and it's going to be a learning experience for him? Here's my thing: is this like where he hovers? Is like that. Five, six, seven range. The rest of the outdoors, dude. That's where he was last year. Yeah, I mean, think about it. We talked about this on our preview show. Yeah. That's where he was last year. Yeah. So, like, why, why would it be any different? I don't know. Like, he's and I actually, I was more impressed that second moto. The fact when everybody was dropping anchor, mm-hmm. he was, was so. And there's a factory guy, a couple of them that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah. Dude, he just kept pushing through. Like he he did not, which is weird because he has Addison's disease. I thought he was like, I was like, yeah, he's, he's not going to be good late in these motos, and he just he kept grinding through. So. Um. Yeah. Very. Very impressive. And you, you got to think if he gets starts, like he's five to ten all easy. Hundred percent. I, I don't see why he wouldn't be. Hundred percent. So Jose Butron goes Wildcat Racing. Wow. Goes uh, nine six for six. Just picking dudes off. Dude, that just second picking them off late. A fucking shining star of veteran Spanish fitness. savvy. <laughs> I heard. Did you know that he was as involved with like hurlings as what he is? Dude, yeah, apparently Boutron, it, Boutron back in the day in the MX2 class was like, for a long time, was considered one of the best Spanish like MX2 guy, like, so guys ever. Apparently, he has a journal, like a Tony Alessi style setup journal for like conditions, suspension settings, all that kind of crap. And then supposedly, like, he's real tight with Jeffrey oh, yeah. about setting stuff, Doesn't which is me, weird. Dude. Boutron back in the day was legit. Yeah. The problem is, is when he got off the 250 and went to the 450 class, I think he went in too early because, if I remember correctly, he bumped up to 450s before the whole under 23 rule came yeah. into play over there. And he just he wasn't on good machinery. He kept getting hurt, you know, shit like that. But, dude, Boutron for a long time was a, like, a perennial top five dude in the MX2 class back in the day mm-hmm. when, like, Hurlings was there, when Kenny was there. Well, a little bit after Kenny, but, like, when Marv, when all those dudes, like, Tommy Searle, Max, or uh, Benoit Patrell, all those guys. Um, you know the crazy thing, and, and and I understand people say, "Oh, it's sad," because there was a couple other like mid-level GP dudes there. Dude, Boutron has been kind of hovering around this nine to twelve area most of the year. Yeah, and I don't really know how good those bikes what what kind of help they're getting right now. I know that they almost had to go back because they ran out of money, and then yeah. Steve stepped up. Whatever. Um, how much do you think it takes to sponsor that team? Uh, Moto Aftermath Show, Wildcat Racing, Iron not, Man Series Finale. Probably not super expensive, but probably not cheap. Like, we don't have any money, but like, <laughs> could I shake my couch cushions for enough money to like get us on the um, side there, or what? I mean, I, that would be cool. Like, it's I mean, five it would, grand, you think? I don't know. Probably like five to ten. 
I would assume. Probably like yeah, text. We gotta text Lorenzo. Find out. Um, but like Butron, dude, he the last couple and the last couple times he's rode the the MXGP class. Yeah, he's not even been a top fifteen guy. Well, and this is the com- This is like the stuff that I always. This is well, not. I'm not and trying. Now to, we're now we're sixth place. And I'm not trying to make this a GP versus AMA debate. That's not what I'm saying. I just always find it odd when I see some guys like that. I'm like, dude. I'm like, how the fuck does he come over here? That's a great question. And the thing is, is like, okay, if you have Barsha well, and Tomac and them, what's he floating around like? Yeah, eight to twelve guy basically. But then you still look at it and you go, he's not even top fifteen. So like, even if you put yeah. him in eight to twelve, you're like. Outside of being the top level of our guys, it really actually shows the depth yeah. of our series as opposed to like those guys over there. Yeah. So then you start thinking, you go, okay, what if a guy like Jeremy Seward came over here? Would he be winning? No. But like, would he be fifth? You think Hurling's going to come over for the last three? Uh, well, it depends on how healthy he is. I mean, he's out right now. So. Well, yeah, I know that. I'm just saying, you think he's going to be like, you know what, I'll just go to the race the last three in the U.S., because that seems like a good idea. I mean, he's definitely out of the points at this yeah. point. So, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, it'd be cool to even just see him come back and do Iron Man. Yeah. Like he did in 2017. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, really cool for Jose Butron. Um, definitely just, I, I, I'm kind of like with Mark because I didn't really expect him to be there at the end of that moto like that. No. And, dude, he, just kept, grinding. he just kept grinding, yeah. man. Just, just, just thirty-two year old veteran, man, yeah. veteran savvy, bro, Fucking doing it for us vet riders. Been pro for like seventeen years now. It's totally it fine. Just, it's wild, man. But hey, dude, he's making it work, and and I don't know, mad, mad respect to him because, like I said, he's been doing this for a long time. Yeah, local hero Chris Canning goes eight seven for seventh, which we kind of all expected. Oh, I mean, he lives on the property. He so. literally he, lives there. He probably motos down. He's like, head back to the barbecue right now. Yeah, we gotta go to that camp, man. Get that barbecue. I love having Stu. Stu is I just, fucking. Dude, he does not he give is a, a shit. gem. Knife the front end, bro. Knife, knife the, the front, front end. end. Just knife the front. He's like, I'd be doing it, bro. Be like, yo, what happened to you, bro? I tucked the front. <laughs> did you see the? Did you see the moto beams thing that was like uh, uh, Stu's advice to to Did Sexton yeah. at the end of the thing, and it was just a guy from Rocky. Throw a damn towel, dude. I I love it because like Ricky is just Ricky's Ricky, not trying to piss anybody off, and James just James does doesn't not care. care. I think that's he doesn't care. He's I love so this version awesome. of James because he's feeling dangerous. Well, dude, he's gotten to a point in his career where he just is okay. With yeah, what he who he, he is. He realizes what, that it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter no because he's always going to be James Stewart. Yeah, and I think that's what is is cool about some of these guys. Same thing with Villapoto. Like RV does not fucking care. No, but then you got people like RC and Dunge who are like trying to just appeal to the masses. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, just fucking let it go. But yep. st- but anyways, uh, Canning. Yeah, I mean, dude. Kind of figured he would do this at the Wick. He's. I just didn't realize he had never gotten a top ten though up to this point. Yeah, that's weird. You look at some of the rides that he's had. Yeah, and you're like, holy shit! And then when you hear, yeah, he's never gotten a top ten. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's wild. Um, that's a good ride for him for an off road guy. Yesterday. Yeah, you know, and uh, I've been doing the J Day stuff. Yeah, um, teaching classes, just living life. Um, Barbecuing at the trailer. At probably the, doing at motos the, at like nine thirty at night with the lights 930 on. Nine thirty at night with the lights on, which is awesome. I hope he does. I hope he does Unadilla because he's also been really good at Unadilla. Yeah, in the past. that'd be cool. Hey, Maybe just, he's got the camper. Just, just, yeah, just go roll, on up roll there, it, bro. roll it on up there. Um, yeah, man. Just, uh, just kind of shows. Even though it is the Wick, and he knows that track like the back of his hand. Like he's he's a talented dude. Yeah, you know. So yeah, uh, AC goes seven eight for eighth. Just couldn't hold there. on. Yeah, couldn't, I, I heard mean, it was yeah. rough for him holding on, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, Ty Masterpool goes 5'10 for ninth. Uh, definitely dropped anchor hard in that hard second moto. Hard that second But he one. was, it's, dude, it seems like he but was. But that first moto, he was, he, in a was battle whole, he was in a battle the whole time. Yeah. So he kind of expected that and to happen. he looked good that first moto, too. He looked really good. God, he's good. What do you good. think he would be doing if he was on a factory 450 right now? I and I don't know. even mean the bike, just for the fact that he wouldn't have to worry about all the shit that comes along with being a privateer, and he could just focus on riding. I don't know because it's mean, like he's fifth on a privateer 450. Yeah, which we I, obviously I, know is easier. I don't. I don't know that it what, does anything what, for him to be honest be, with would you. Would he be beating AP? Uh, maybe because I feel he's not going to be like, Dylan Chase. I feel like Jet, he'd just be like, battling in that top five every single week. To be honest with you, I feel like that would be his yeah. his situation there. So I do like the fact though that he keeps acknowledging that hey man, I got to prove to these guys I can ride Supercross. Yep, which is a thing for a while. He, him, and him, it, him, his dad, Jerry, didn't want to do. Yeah, yeah. Him, mm-hmm. his family didn't want to do it. They they're were going to the it. SMX rounds. Oh yeah, he's so we'll made see. that clear. How crazy would it be though that if all of a sudden it just the fact that he needed to be on a 450 all these years, well, and right. he just jumps in and he's like top too. five. That could be a thing too. I don't know. We'll see how these SMX rounds. I love go, the master. He's going to qualify. Yeah, I love the masterful family, so I hope that he succeeds. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. It's gonna he's be just thankful to be on a bike. But dude, if he gets a top five, it'll be like. 
dude, you just need to be on a 450 all He's these just years. thankful that he can just go buy a bike and go race. Yeah, I know. That was the thing. It's that a very big thing. It's true. I mean, I can't buy a Formula One car. Uh, Jason Anderson goes 614 <sighs> for 10th. He has a back injury also. Oh, boy. That's... Does he have a back injury or he just came back and went, oh, you know what? This was stupid. I think honestly what it is is he just wants to be on a tryout. But no, that second moto was, <laughs> that second moto was bad, dude. It's like when you're sitting down the whole entire lap, it's like oh, your back's not getting any better doing that. Your back's there, not partner. getting any better, buddy. Not on that track. Yeah, not on that, man. I just like pulled off, and I'd have been like, "Can I just wait till Jet laps me, and then I can just kind of." I don't know, man. That was that was bad. It, I mean, granted, yeah. he's not a sand guy, and he's never been good at the wick, like ever. No, like even in the two fifty days. No. Uh but that second moto was like. Mm. That was really bad. I was like, it was a really were, bad look. There was a moment, like with ten minutes to go, and I saw him dropping down. I'm like, is he going to even get points now? Yeah, that was a big question there. He uh, went to fourteen, dude. It was just it. You don't normally see Do factory think, dudes like that, though. You, you think, don't. You think he'll get hurt also and not race the last three? Just be <laughs> just like double check that he's got enough points, no matter what, to uh, make those SMX rounds, and just be like, see ya. I mean. If he does have the points, yeah, totally. He's he's he probably won't show up, but he's just gonna probably get a jump on riding Supercross. Yeah. So yeah, but that just that second moto was wasn't it, great. Was really really bad. Wasn't great. All right, so we've got Gert Crestino from Gert, Estonia. Gert Crestinoff. Crestinoff. Once again, not Take a dude that even out. not a dude that even scores fucking points in the GPS. Twelve twelve for eleventh. Uh, he was a bad bad man back in the day in the sand. Actually, what? Uh, won an MX2 overall at Kegums way back well, in the day. Well, he went 12-12 for 11. He's also a fucking giant. Well, that could be a thing, too. He's uh, like 10 feet tall. Freddie Noren goes 15-11 and 11 for 12. Okay. Freddie's having a... I don't think Freddie likes riding Suzuki's right now. I don't think so, either. Uh, Nicoletti goes 11-16 for 13. was really thinking he was going to die at some point yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> really thinking that was going to happen. Hawaii's own Grant Harlan goes 22-9 for 14th. Shocking. Who going from... Outdoors Supercross. to Supercross and back to outdoors was rough. Oh, boy. Uh, Lorenzo LaCrucio, the other half of Wildcat Racing there, went 17-13 uh, for 15th. Lars Van Berkel, 16-15 uh, for 16th. Chiz goes 14-17 for 17th. Jerry Robin, 13-34 for 18th. Uh, Luke Renslin made an appearance. Yep. On a 450. So yeah, that was not on a 252 stroke. Not on a 252 stroke. He goes 18-20 for 19th. And rounding out the top 20, Carl Kutsar. Carol Kutsar. Carol Kutsar. Carl, Carol, whatever the fuck. That other Estonia guy, yep. 24-18 for 20th. Yeah, that was all part of uh, one of the teams that they ride over there. The There's also a kid, uh, I think his name was Charlie Putnam. Um, they ride like the Revo series, mm. and then they do the GPs. And Charlie's da- I think it's Charlie. It's either Charlie or Josh. Uh, his dad, oh, no, his name is Josh. His dad's name is Charlie. He owns that team. And people like were wondering, like, why the why the fuck would he come all the way over to America? Because Telviku, we'll talk about in the two fifty classes on that team. Mm-hmm. Like, why the hell would he come over and and do ride America as much money as it cost him? And his dad straight up said, he's like, yeah, I mean, we definitely could do better over in the GPS probably because like a lot easier, you know. But uh, his dad straight up said, yeah, we're gonna get more exposure going ten to twenty in America than we would do in the GPS. This is true. I was like, oh, okay. This is true. Um, all right, so Privateer Hero, who's coming up on the show here, Kevin Morans, goes 29-22 for 25th, which is actually better than I anticipated. Um, Michigan, Jeff Walker, we had some classic Walker-Morans battles. Yeah. Walker goes 28-23 for 26th. And then one more Michigan shout-out, Chris Prebula goes 36 DNS for 43rd. Really surprised Jace didn't make the motos yesterday. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't even think about that there. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's yep. okay. Yep, that's a really thing. really surprised he did not make the motos yesterday. I wonder what happened. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, just a I don't know, man. The, I don't really even know what to say anymore about the four fifty class, which is weird. It's a great nap time for it's, me. It's like I can wake up the same things happening. Jets winning. Like I I I still <laughs> like that is like I'll it's still like a NASCAR race. I fall asleep. A jet's leading. I wake up. He's still leading, and then he wins. It's 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 weird because I've I've been through this three times now, and I've seen it. Part of part of it was a lot easier with Stu because Stu was oh, has always been my guy. But it's just it's a weird thing to see because it's been so long since we've seen this. And once again, I've said this before. Like he's not doing it in the fashion that I was used to. It's just I don't know. Like. I still feel with even him being twelve and zero at this point that we still 
We don't have a lot of questions answered, which you would think that we would by this point, but I think it's just because it's this debate. What is Jet doing? Is Jet doing this? Is he not doing this? Is he doing this? Especially when you hear RC and Stu talk about it, and it's like, okay, like, where do we go from here? Like, what's the ceiling? Like, I just, I don't know. I, I think it's because it is Jet, and Jet is kind of a conundrum that people just don't know. People just don't know about him, which is fucking weird because he's been over here since 2020. They talked about it a lot yesterday of how different it is of he manages these races compared to like when they raced. It was like just dominate everybody as mm-hmm. hard as you can. That's like, a different mentality. Like you can fit four fists in their asshole. Yeah. You four fists those yeah, motherfuckers. Exactly. It's a different in. mentality. You don't you don't do you don't worry about uh you don't worry about, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just only gonna do the pinky. You're like, nope. Four fists. I also both will, feet and my head. I, I my whole leg. Whole leg. I also do Fully feel though because it's something that they have talked about and it's something that we've talked about and I think everybody in the industry talks about. Like, what is Jet's ceiling? He's only nineteen. I do feel though. What is his ceiling? Yeah. Well, let's see here. What do we figure he's got left? Seven years. I mean, I guess it depends on how much money he makes. Seven perfect seasons outdoors. That's never going to I'm happen. totally kidding because yeah. he's as soon as this Honda contract's up, he's going to race WSX instead of this anyway. So Yeah, well, I also but I don't think. Anyways, WSX, I'm just not. Wouldn't it be crazy if he perfect seasoned outdoors every single year? Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Too never like, say never. No, it's never going to happen. It's highly, un- highly unlikely. Possible, but Do not Do you think probable. there's a higher possibility of that or dying in an airplane crash? Both about the same. <laughs> One in ten million. Okay. Uh, so, I do think, though, that I don't think as far as his ceiling as what he can do mm-hmm. on a dirt bike track is much higher. I think the only thing that's going to change is how much more how much more consistent, which is crazy to say because he's fucking 12 and 0, but the things he can do on the bike to even use less energy. Yeah. He's going to get bored here is what's going to happen. Well, that's and and that's the same. Like, it's kind of like with Ricky. Like, Ricky was bored for a very long time until Stu came along. And, mm-hmm. you know, say like, it's going to be one of those things that I don't think he can be that much better on a dirt bike. Yeah. Because he's already, the he's so naturally talented. The way he rides the bike, like, the way his attitude is, it's hard to believe he's going to do much better. I think it's just going to be how is he going to approach, and it's more going to be off the bike to his body to allow him to use even less energy on a bike and just be like, eh, like I'm not even breaking a sweat at this point. So I don't think he's going to go much higher with his ceiling because it's kind of hard to see him going much higher, especially with, like I said, the way he rides a bike. Like, you just, he's not in this mentality of winning by a minute. It's just going to, the only thing I'm wondering, and I say this again, is, is what's going to happen the first time he really gets pushed to a level of him being uncomfortable because we only saw it a few times on the two fifties hit the ground, different story. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I still don't understand jet. I, I, I don't think a lot of people do because they just don't know what he's doing half the time. Like I, I truly believe that because he doesn't, either. he's just riding. He doesn't just go out there ride. Like, and it's, it's funny too, to hear the same thing. RC and Stu disagreed on that as well. RC's like, I don't think he's a thinker. Like, I don't think he goes, I think he just literally goes out there, and it's something I've said before with a lot of guys, goes off muscle memory, just reacts when it is. But then Stu goes, he's like, no, I think he is a thinker. It's just one of those things that I don't think he gets wrapped up. I don't know. The way the way Dan Truman talks about how he no offense to stuff. Dan, no offense to Dan, though. It's, I, it's kind of one he, of those things, again, like, who are you going to believe? Dan Truman, even though he's close to him? Or Stu and Ricky when they evaluate I'm just, somebody. No, no, and I'm not saying that Dan said this either way. I'm just saying that, like, the things Dan says about him with the questions he asks and the way he is just makes me think that, like, when it comes to this stuff, like, they're just in a lot going on up here. Like, as far as, like, overthinking or anything. Let, let's put it this way. He's not Ryan Dungy and testing himself into the ground here. He's just like... Yeah, man, I'll just ride my dirt bike. It's fine. I don't, I don't really care. Whatever. I think super, set, set it up. It'll be fine. I think cool. Supercross, crazy enough, is going to be more of a, an idea of where he is. Mm-hmm. Because even though he was more dominant on the 250 and Supercross than he was outdoors, yeah, uh, we all know there's certain things you have to do on a 450 and Supercross that you just can't get away with. I can't wait to, to see him scrubbing quads, dude. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not talking like they do now. I'm talking like hard, like stew scrubs on quads in Supercross because that's what it's going to be. Did you watch the uh, compilation video I put up from um, Redbud? Yeah, for the leap. No, uh, there's video in there of him scrubbing the leap. Yeah, 
No one else does that. Well, not now. In the suit used to get upside down off the label. Well, throwing a big whip is different. This wasn't a whip. No, I mean like he literally would get vertical. The, the, it's vertical. I, I mean, I'll go back and watch Stu's leap stuff and see if I can find something. It's probably going to be hard because he was doing it usually on press day. I was going to say, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. But, dude, I'm just saying, in 10 years of going, I haven't seen anybody scrub the leap like that. It was wild. Yeah. I, I watched it and I was like, holy. He, like, it, it's a legitimate. Scr- everybody else is stretching and he is scrubbing. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. We've got a bright future with that kid. But that's been your 450 Race Recap brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Link in the description down below if you're in the Southwest Michigan area. Have them help you out with some seamless gutters, some beautiful exterior modifications to your property. They're your people. They're our people. Me and Justin never buy a house. Calling Gutterworks. Getting some some fresh shit. So, uh, 